that we have a, a meeting between Africa and one other country. We respect the sovereignty of others. I think to ask for to be for a reciprocation is not to ask for too much. No. Can you imagine a host country disrespecting a leader, but the leader still appreciates being called? Does that seem like a master-slave mentality? Recently, Ruto asked Europe to treat African leaders better, but Italy ignored him and treated him even worse this time. Surprisingly, Ruto didn't mind and was happy with the treatment. What exactly happened with Ruto in Italy? Let's find out. Every time an African leader visits Europe, they are treated with disrespect. Kenyan President William Ruto threw shade on the table, raising eyebrows and concerns about how our African leaders are treated when they hit the road. He didn't mince words, pointing out instances where our leaders are treated like they're on a school field trip, stuffed into buses like kids gearing up for a day out. President Ruto didn't just spill the tea, he poured it out, emphasizing the need for respect when our leaders step onto the global stage. It's a real talk moment, and it's time we take a closer look at how our leaders are treated when they pack their bags for international trips. Picture this. African leaders, with all their wisdom and experience, being ushered into buses like a group of school children. It's not a good look. Ruto hit the nail on the head, questioning the lack of respect shown to leaders. And honestly, who can blame him? The global stage is no playground. The leaders are not here to play. They are representing nations, bringing their A-game to the table. Treating them like they're on a school bus not only undermines their authority, but also sends the wrong message about the level of respect African leaders deserve. President Ruto rightly expressed his disapproval of this treatment, and it's a sentiment shared by many who believe it's high time our leaders are given the respect they deserve. It's not about entitlement, but equality on the world stage. If the native leaders attend the same event, in their luxury cars, why are African leaders treated this way? After all, no one like is to be treated like a child when tackling the complexities of international relations. They are here to do serious talks. Respect is not a one-way street. To be taken seriously globally, all leaders must be treated with the dignity and respect they've earned. It's not about demanding special treatment. It's about asking for the same courtesy given to leaders from other parts of the world. President Ruto's remarks are a wake-up call, a reminder that it's time to shake off the outdated perceptions that have lingered for too long. Our leaders are not boarding a school bus. They're boarding planes to engage in discussions that shape the future of our continent. Let's call a spade a spade. Treating leaders like kids isn't just disrespectful. It reflects outdated stereotypes that need to be shattered. It's time for a paradigm shift, a change in the narrative that defines how the world sees African leadership. As African people, don't you and the leaders take pride in your diverse cultures, rich history, and the strength that unites you? Your leaders carry the responsibility of representing that strength on the global stage. It's time for the world to see them for what they are, accomplished individuals with valuable contributions to make, not passengers on a school bus. President Ruto's call for respect is not a plea. It's a demand for equality. Our leaders demand that we be seen as equals internationally, not as individuals who need babysitting. These leaders are not asking for special treatment. They're asking for the acknowledgement they deserve. Why did Ruto criticize the travel arrangements of African leaders? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. William Ruto's critique of the travel arrangements for African leaders is grounded in his disapproval of the prevailing practice where all 55 African leaders embark on separate journeys to meet the leader of a specific country. According to Ruto, this approach is impractical and inherently unfair. His advocacy for a more efficient and practical diplomatic strategy centers around the proposition that the African Union Commission should be responsible for representing the entire continent during such summits. We have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place I mean, 
One key aspect of Rudo's criticism is his emphasis on the inefficiencies and potential drawbacks of having a large delegation of leaders from diverse African nations travel individually to meet with a single counterpart. The traditional approach poses significant logistical challenges and questions, its effectiveness in fostering meaningful diplomatic engagements. The sheer scale of organizing and coordinating multiple arrivals, accommodations, and schedules can lead to a chaotic and less focused diplomatic engagement, potentially diluting the impact of the discussions. Ruto's proposal to have the African Union Commission represent the continent at these summits reflects a broader vision for a more streamlined and cohesive approach to international relations. By assigning the responsibility to a representative body like the African Union Commission, he aims to promote more efficient use of resources and time. This shift would allow African leaders to engage in diplomatic discussions in a collective and unified manner, presenting a stronger and more coherent front on the global stage. Rudo's criticism can be seen as a call for a fundamental review of the current diplomatic norms and practices. He contends that a more practical and strategic approach to diplomatic engagements can better serve the interests of the African continent. Rudo's proposal does not damage the importance of personal interactions between leaders but rather seeks to strike a balance that ensures effective representation while minimizing the challenges associated with the current travel arrangements of individual leaders. The Kenyan president's perspective is rooted in the belief that a collective approach to diplomatic representation can enhance Africa's standing and influence in the international arena. By advocating for a shift in the representation model, Ruto aims to ensure that Africa's voice is heard and amplified globally. The current system, he argues, can lead to fragmented efforts and diluted impact. In contrast, a more cohesive representation through the African Union Commission could present a united front, strengthening Africa's position in international discussions. That we have a, a meeting between Africa and one other country. We respect the sovereignty of others. I think to ask for, to be, for a reciprocation is not to ask for too much. No. Moreover, Ruto's criticism touches on the broader issue of resource allocation. The financial and logistical burden of organizing numerous individual trips for African leaders is substantial. By consolidating representation through the African Union Commission, Ruto envisions a more cost-effective and resource-efficient approach. This, in turn, could free up resources for more pressing domestic needs, contributing to African nations' overall development and well-being. William Ruto's criticism of the travel arrangements for African leaders is not merely a commentary on the current diplomatic norms, but a call for a paradigm shift. His proposition to have the African Union Commission represent the continent at international summits reflects a forward-looking vision prioritizing efficiency, unity, and effectiveness in diplomatic engagements. By addressing the logistical challenges and promoting a more streamlined approach, Ruto aims to ensure that Africa's presence on the global stage is not only impactful but also sustainable in the long run. After what he said, would you expect him to visit the recent summit with all the African leaders? Well, to everyone's surprise, he has made a U-turn. He did visit the recent summit with all other leaders. The apparent contradiction in President Ruto's behavior, shifting from his robust and assertive stance to a seemingly more tolerant attitude, raises questions about the motivations behind this change. The fact that African leaders once again faced disrespect during the Italy-Africa summit with Ruto seemingly accepting it, prompts speculation about whether this reflects a genuine transformation in his approach or a strategic move in the diplomatic game. The question arises, is this a new, softer side of Ruto emerging, or is he strategically guiding the diplomatic landscape, choosing to tolerate disrespect for larger geopolitical gains? It's essential to acknowledge that political figures, including Ruto, are complicated individuals with multifaceted personalities. The shift in behavior could result from evolving priorities, changing diplomatic strategies, or the recognition of broader geopolitical considerations. Despite the apparent contradiction, one thing remains clear. Ruto's bold stand, coupled with this shift in behavior, has initiated a conversation that goes beyond his actions. He faces scrutiny not merely for tolerating disrespect, but for the contrast between his previous criticism and his current response. This paradox highlights the challenges and contradictions within political figures, 
showcasing that their actions are subject to interpretation and scrutiny. As this mystery unfolds, it prompts a broader discussion about the treatment of African leaders on the global stage. Ruto's actions, whether a result of genuine change or strategic handling, have brought attention to the larger issue of how African leaders are perceived and treated internationally. The contradiction within Ruto's behavior becomes a catalyst for re-evaluating diplomatic norms and expectations for leaders in the global arena. But how was President Ruto treated during the summit? President Ruto's experience during the Italy-Africa summit presented a mixed bag of treatment, reflecting the complexities and challenges of international diplomacy. Despite his earlier advocacy for respect on the global stage, he was disheartened during the summit, being asked to line up with other leaders for photographs. This scenario echoed his criticism regarding the mistreatment of African leaders, emphasizing the ongoing disparities in how leaders from different regions are treated during such events. All view being asked to stand in line for photographs as a contradictory response to Ruto's plea for dignified interactions on the international platform. The symbolic nature of such incidents can have broader implications, perpetuating a narrative of unequal treatment that runs counter to the principles of diplomatic equality and respect for all nations. Surprisingly, despite facing what could be perceived as mistreatment, President Ruto expressed appreciation for Italy's prime minister, acknowledging the importance of the meeting with African leaders. How did he address mistreatment during the summit? President William Ruto's pragmatic approach during the Italy-Africa summit showcased a different stance this time, particularly in light of his earlier criticism regarding the mistreatment of African leaders during foreign trips. Rather than adopting an aggressive stance or boycotting the event, Ruto actively engaged in the summit, defending his participation while advocating for a more practical and respectful approach to diplomatic representation. By supporting the idea of selecting a group of leaders to represent African nations at such international forums, Ruto was willing to address the concerns he had previously raised. His defense of his involvement suggested a strategic decision to work within the existing diplomatic framework, seeking reforms to ensure that African leaders are treated with the dignity and respect they deserve on the global stage. This pragmatic approach reflects Ruto's commitment to finding viable solutions rather than disengaging from international forums altogether. But last time, he boycotted going to the European nations with all 54 leaders again. Just because he was getting behind and was able to make the European leaders happy, he again traveled? While acknowledging the mistreatment issue, he actively participated in the summit to influence change from within. Ruto's advocacy for a more streamlined representation process aligns with his belief in achieving meaningful diplomatic engagements but by compromising the stature of African leaders. The recent flip-flop by William Ruto shines a light on a more extensive predicament within African leadership. Revealing a narrative that has played out repeatedly, leaders voicing concerns about mistreatment and exploitation, only for their actions to convey a different story. This inconsistency is not a solo act but a symptom of a broader issue that has disillusioned and disheartened citizens. Ruto's about-face at the Italy-Africa summit is not an isolated incident. It represents a deeper ailment that plagues African leadership. The rhetoric of standing up against mistreatment and exploitation clashes starkly with the reality of attending summits that were criticized just months prior. This compromise on integrity resonates across the continent, raising questions about the authenticity of leaders' commitment to the principles they profess. The disillusionment among citizens is palpable and goes beyond mere disappointment in a single leader. It reflects a sigh of frustration at a pattern that seems to repeat itself. The inconsistency between leaders' words and actions sends a clear message personal gains often precede collective interests. The repetition of this pattern contributes to a growing sense of mistrust among the populace. Citizens witness leaders who, despite articulating strong positions against mistreatment, appear to cave to diplomatic pressures or personal interests when faced with the actual decisions on the global stage. This inconsistency erodes leaders' credibility and diminishes public confidence in their ability to affect real change. A crucial aspect of this issue is the impact on the continent's collective standing in international politics. The inconsistency in leadership behaviors can undermine African leaders' effectiveness in advocating for their nation's fair treatment. It reinforces stereotypes and fuels perceptions that African leaders are willing to compromise on principles 
hindering their ability to negotiate from a position of strength. The cycle of leaders expressing grievances and engaging in actions, contrary to their stated principles, perpetuates a negative narrative extending beyond the specific leaders involved. It contributes to a broader skepticism about the genuineness of political rhetoric, hindering the potential for positive change and collective progress. Why has he changed his narrative? Kenyan President William Ruto's active participation in the Italy-Africa summit in Rome highlighted his commitment to engaging in substantive discussions on various crucial issues affecting Africa and Italy. Ruto approached the summit with a comprehensive agenda, reflecting his dedication to addressing challenges and contributing to collective efforts for sustainable solutions. The summit covered various critical topics, and Ruto contributed significantly to discussions on food security, culture, education, vocational training, energy security, and economic and infrastructure development. Additionally, his involvement in talks addressing the global challenges of human trafficking and terrorism showcased his commitment to tackling complex and multifaceted issues that impact the well-being of nations on both continents. President Ruto's active participation in the thematic discussions demonstrated his understanding of the interconnectedness of global challenges and the importance of collaborative efforts in finding effective solutions. By engaging in these talks, he aimed to foster cooperation among the participating nations, emphasizing the need for joint action to address shared concerns. Beyond participating in the broader thematic discussions, Ruto prioritized establishing bilateral engagements with key stakeholders meetings with European Union leaders, officials from the World Bank, and representatives from the International Monetary Fund. IMF highlighted his commitment to building strategic partnerships with influential global entities. His interactions with African leaders involved in peace processes in regions such as the Democratic Republic of Congo, Sudan, and South Sudan showcased a commitment to regional stability and conflict resolution. Ruto's proactive approach at the Italy-Africa Summit reflected a broader commitment to advancing diplomatic efforts and finding cooperative solutions to the diverse challenges discussed during the event. By engaging with international partners, he sought to strengthen ties between Kenya and influential global organizations. Positioning the country as an active participant in pursuing sustainable development, peace, and prosperity. The president's presence at the summit symbolized Kenya's commitment to fostering collaboration it highlighted the country's role as a proactive participant in shaping the future of Africa's relationship with the international community. Ruto's engagement in discussions ranging from economic development to security concerns showcased a holistic approach to addressing the continent's complex issues. But does this mean giving up on the continent's dignity? President Ruto's response to the mistreatment during the Italy-Africa summit reveals a nuanced and pragmatic diplomatic approach. Despite the ongoing mistreatment, his gratitude towards Italy's Prime Minister raises questions about the balance African leaders must have to preserve their dignity while maintaining diplomatic relations. Ruto's willingness to appreciate the meeting suggests that leaders, in certain situations, may prioritize diplomatic engagement over immediately addressing perceived slights. But is it justified to treat African leaders with disrespect? Why did Italy do it to Ruto? It's essential to examine why Italy or any European nation might engage in such actions and the broader dynamics at play. The mistreatment of African leaders is not a new phenomenon, and it often stems from historical power imbalances, colonial legacies, and entrenched stereotypes. While individual incidents may be attributed to oversight or diplomatic protocols, the recurring pattern raises concerns about a deeper issue of unequal treatment. The perception that European nations, including Italy, may not consider Africa on equal footing can be rooted in historical narratives of exploitation and a lingering colonial mindset. Despite the rhetoric of equality and partnership, there are instances where African leaders experience treatment that contradicts these principles. Exploiting Africa's resources without benefits for the continent is another dimension of this issue. The historical exploitation of African nations for economic gain has created a perception that, while mistreatment may occur, there is often an eagerness to exploit Africa's resources. One aspect perpetuating this cycle is the lack of consequences for such mistreatment. If disrespectful treatment has no repercussions, European nations may feel encouraged to continue such actions. 
the absence of a united front from African leaders against mistreatment might contribute to the belief that such behavior has no significant consequences. The suggestion that African leaders should boycott events where disrespect is shown indicates a potential strategy to convey a strong message. However, the challenge lies in achieving a unified response from all African leaders, as diplomatic and geopolitical considerations often influence their decisions to attend such events. Ultimately, the power to reshape the dynamics and demand respect lies in the hands of African leaders. A collective and assertive stance can send a powerful message to the international community that mistreatment will not be tolerated. The challenge is fostering unity among African nations to create a strong and influential bloc that shapes international norms and expectations. Why do you think Ruto changed his narrative? Why doesn't Europe respect African leaders? What should be done by African leaders now? Let us know in the comments section if Ruto should have appreciated Italy after all that. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.